Look at an example. We want to find the missing value of this proportion. We have n over 7 equals 9 over 21. I want to find the value of n. To do this, what I'm going to do is find the cross products and set them equal to each other. So we're going to multiply 21 times n and put that equal to 7 times 9. So we get 21 times n is equal to 7 times 9. Now, the second step is to divide both sides by the 21. Notice we're multiplying by 21 times the n. To get rid of it, what we want to do, division is always the inverse or opposite operation from multiplying. So we're going to divide both sides by 21. We get now 21n is equal to 63. 7 times 9 is 63. So we want to divide both sides by 21. Here the 21's cancel. And now what is 63 divided by 21? And we find out that the value is 3. Now let's check and see if this works. Okay, I want to know is 3 over 7 the same thing as 9 over 21? Well, if it is, the cross product should be equal. That is 3 times 21, which is 63, should be the same value as 7 times 9, which is 63. So therefore, it does check since these values are the same. So we know we have the right answer. And now let's review what we did again. We found the product of the extremes equal to the product of the means. So we multiplied 21 times n and then 7 times 9 and set them equal to each other. And then we divided both sides by the, co by the number we're multiplying by the missing value. And we end up with 3 in this particular example. Let's look at our second example. We want to find the value of n if 28 over 52 is supposed to be equivalent to 7 over n. So what we're going to do is use the rules again. We're going to find, we're going to find the cross products. So we're going to multiply 28 times n and put it equal to 52 times 7. So if we do that, we get 28 times n equals 52 times 7, which gives us 28 times n equals 364. In other words, 52 times 7 is 364. Now we want to find the value of n, and to do that, we need to divide both sides by the number with it. So we're going to divide both sides by the 28. 28 into 28 cancel to 1, because we get just 1. And 364 divided by 28 turns out to be 13. Now let's check this and see if that's true. We want said that 28 divided by 52 is equal to 7 over 13. Check the cross products. 28 times 13 is equal to, do that value, in your calculator, and we get 364. Now multiply 52 times 7, and it is 364, so it does check. That is our solution. N equal 13 is our answer. In our third example, we want to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. That means our second decimal place. We want to round to the second decimal place. So we still are going to multiply. So we're going to get n times 8 is equal to 15 times 3. So 15 times 3 equals n times 8, which gives us 45 equals n times 8. We divide both sides by the number with n. The number with n is 8. So we're going to divide both sides by 8. And when we do the division, we can do it on our calculator, we end up with n equals 5.625. But this says to round to the nearest hundredth. 
That means I want to round, this is the tenth, this is the hundredths place. That means I want to round so there's only two decimal places in the answer. Since the five is five, that means we're going to increase the number in front of it by one. So we're going to get 5.63 as our answer, and that's what the answer is, rounded to the nearest hundredth. If we had wanted to round to the nearest tenth, we would have gotten 5.6. This is to the nearest tenth. Depends on what we're asked for. This said the hundredth, which is going to be that. If we want a nearest tenth, this would work. Depends on what the directions say. Our next example says round to the nearest hundredth. We want to find the value of n if 1.9 over 7 is equal to 13 over n. So we're going to set the cross products equal to each other. So 1.9 times n should equal 7 times 13. We get 1.9 times n is equal to 7 times 13. Okay. 1.9 times n is equal to 91. 7 times 13 is equal to 91. Now we need to divide both sides by the number in front of the n. We divide both sides by 1.9 and finding that value we get 47.89 rounded to the nearest hundredth. Now, if you have trouble with rounding, you may need to go back and look at the tape that covers rounding back in Unit 3. Okay, our next example has a fraction in it, but it doesn't change how we do it. We still are going to solve a proportion by cross-multiplying. So we're going to multiply 3 and 1 half times 7 is equal to 8 times m. So we get 3 and 1 half times 7 is equal to 8 times m. Now, we can change that to an improper fraction. 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 1 gives us 7 halves. Times 7 we can put over 1. That multiplied then gives us 49 over 2. 7 times 7 is 49, 2 times 1 is 2. Now we need to get rid of the 8 that's with the unknown, so we're going to divide both sides by that number that's with it, 8. Now, to divide 49 over 2, divided by 8, says we're going to get 49 over 2 divided by 8. Now remember we can put the 8 over 1, which gives us 49 over 2 times the reciprocal, that is turn it upside down. Nothing reduces, so we get 49 times 1 over 2 times 8 and get 49 sixteenths as our value of m. This is the value we were looking for. So working with fractions is no different. We just have to use the rules for how to multiply or divide fractions.